Welcome back to my channel. I thought I would share my packing or organising of my hospital bag, um, which is this Van Gogh kind of hold all backpack on wheels. So it does turn into a backpack, it also has wheels and you can pull it along um, on the wheels. So it hopefully be quite convenient. Um, and it's big enough to fit all the stuff in. Um, I am going into hospital for a planned C-section, so I am going to be staying in hospital for a little bit longer than I had planned. Hopefully only one night, so 24 hours, although I have packed like I'm going to be in the hospital for three weeks. Um, but yeah, I am going to have to take like overnight stuff because I know now that I will be staying overnight. Um, and because of the coronavirus lockdown, although we only live about five minutes drive from the hospital, um, if I have forgotten anything, um, my boyfriend can't visit me. So once I move on to the maternity ward, he has to go home, which means that he can't bring me anything if I've forgotten it. So I kind of had to make sure I was packing everything that I needed, although I have no idea what I'm going to need because I've never stayed in hospital before. So it's quite tricky, I mean I just basically relied on like the NHS website, the um, hospitals um, list of things to bring, um, which isn't actually that long to be fair. I don't think you actually need to take that much stuff, it's just you just don't know so you just pack loads of extra stuff. Anyway, I'm rambling. So um, I'll open it up, um, so starting with this like first pocket which is a bit hard to see on the camera so I'll get stuff out. This is kind of stuff for me, well actually most of it's stuff for me to be fair. Um, so really importantly is that I have loads of snacks because they said to take uh, snacks with me so that's what I've got and they said to take high fibre snacks because uh, all the drugs that they give you can um, kind of stop, interrupt your digestive system. So I've got high fibre snacks in case I get hungry, which I'm sure I will. Um, and then also some peppermint tea, which is also to help with digestion and they also recommend taking the tea with you. Um, so I've got those. Uh, I've got some headphones, obviously just to listen to some music that I'll just listen to on my phone probably. So I just have these little headphones. I've got a really glamorous laundry bag, which is a plastic bag that I had lying around for my dirty clothes and things. Um, I've got a towel. Um, some of the lists say to take towels, some say don't. I don't think that I need to because I think the hospital will provide towels and everything. This towel is not very big. It's really more like a glorified like face cloth, but it's just if I want to quickly freshen up I've got this with me if I just want to wash my face um, and use my own towel instead of one of theirs. I've got um, some breast pads which are reusable breast pads by a little lamb and um, that come in this like net bag so they've just been through the wash and um, so they're a bit kind of fluffy now. Um, I've never tried them because I haven't needed to yet and I don't know if I'll need to use them in the hospital either and I probably won't need this many but I just thought I would take them and they obviously don't take up very much space and they come in their own little carry bag so I've got those. Um, I've got my toiletries in here, I don't think there's anything particularly exciting, hairbrush, shower gel, toothbrush, toothpaste, moisturiser, deodorant and then some hair um, ties. And then I have a spare face mask. I'll be wearing another one and then this is like a spare one that I've got because you have to wear a face mask at the hospital now but I really don't like the um, hospital ones. They don't fit my face very well so I find them um, really really uncomfortable to wear and I don't think they work very well as masks because they don't fit my face. Um, so we've got these ones which seem to fit better but I still don't like wearing a mask and I think I will find it quite awkward and uncomfortable um, but I think I'm going to have to have one on during the surgery so I wanted to get a better one than the ones that the hospital provides and also the hospital ones are just disposable ones um, and they're not the best for the environment. So in the main part of the bag, 
Um, at the bottom, I've got uh, nappies for the baby. I've got size one, which is four to eleven pounds. Um, we're expecting the baby to be a little bit bigger, um, but about eight and a half pounds. So that should be fine. And then I've also got some maternity pads for me because even when you have a C-section, you still have the fun bleeding afterwards. So I've just got a pack of those, and they're just disposable ones. I did think about getting reusable ones. Um, but because I'm only going to probably use them for a week or two, it just seemed like an unnecessary cost. Same with nappies, we are planning to use reusable ones, but not until the baby's a little bit bigger. The ones that we've got that are reusable will probably fit better around the £10 mark, so that's why we're starting off with some disposable ones. And then I've also got some nappy bags um, for the nappies and also for the maternity pads and stuff in case I need them, so I just got this box of, supposedly they're eco nappy bags, but I don't know. Um, I've got some underwear which I've just shoved into this plastic bag that I think some Moses basket sheets came in, but just to keep the underwear clean, I obviously took it out and washed it. I see so many of these videos where people still have the underwear in its original packaging and I think, have you not washed the underwear before you wear it? That just seems a bit gross um, and each to their own so they recommend that you get high-waisted like really high up underwear post c-section so that the underwear doesn't rub on your wound or your scar so that's what these are and um, they don't actually fit me at the moment because the bump gets in the way because of their high-waisted but hopefully the bump will be a bit smaller post surgery um, and then I've got some clothes so I've got a dressing gown which I bought for the hospital um, I was hoping not to have to buy one and not have to take one in but the one that I already own I think is just too big and fluffy and it'd be too hot because the maternity unit is really warm that's my experience so far of it anyway um, and I also didn't want to get it dirty whereas this I think will be easy to keep clean and it's a bit more lightweight but I did get it in a size 8 to 10 so I'll be able to wear it post baby it just about fits me at the moment it doesn't quite cover the bump up but it just about fits um so my other clothes um so i also bought a, a night dress to wear um because i didn't actually own a night dress i was initially just going to take pajamas but they recommend a night dress in case you still have your catheter in post surgery which is fun hopefully i won't but this will just be easy access it's not a nursing one but it is like um strappy and the straps are adjustable so i thought this would be quite easy to nurse in actually because i can just pull it down if needs be and then i've got some clothes so i've got a maternity t-shirt which um is really creased now but um should be okay for nursing in because it opens up at the top quite a lot and then I've got this green cardigan, which is not maternity, so it doesn't fit me properly at the moment, but just in case I get cold. I don't think I will because it's summertime and, like I said, the maternity unit is roasting, but just in case I need it. I've got just some socks. I've got some maternity leggings, um, which are over-the-bump leggings, so they're high-waisted to avoid rubbing the... Um, scar but then if I don't feel like wearing something high-waisted I've also got this long maternity dress so it's quite loose um, not fitted at all and wouldn't dig in around the scar at all either and then the last thing for me is just this magazine um, in case I get bored because there might be some waiting around before I go in for surgery and then also um, once I'm on the ward, once my boyfriend has left, the baby is sleeping um, I might just want something to entertain myself with. I'm also thinking I might take a book with me um, just in case I want something a bit more than just the magazine to read. I also have my phone but that's kind of all the entertainment that I'll be taking um, so I might want to take a book as well. And then this pouch here, we did have three of these, but boyfriend has lost the other two. So I've only got one of these like packing pouch things. Um, and this is the baby stuff. So pretty much everything else is for me. Um, 
and this is the baby stuff. Um, so, lots of clothes, too many clothes really. Um, I have newborn stuff on um, one side. Well, the newborn stuff is here. Got like little vests, these which are newborn vests and they are so small. Like I can't believe any baby is ever this size. Like that's just minuscule to me. <laughs> That's so, so tiny. Um, I don't know if these will fit. It depends how long the baby is, I guess. Um, because it, we're like I said, we're expecting it to be a bit heavier than perhaps the average. Um, but yeah, I've got like a few little vests in newborn size, and then a few um, um, sleep suits in newborn size as well. They're just so, so cute. Um, they're so cute. And then I've also got a cardigan, just in case it's too cold for the baby. Like I said, the maternity unit is really warm. It's summertime and the drive home is really short. So I don't think we'll actually need a cardigan, but babies obviously need to be kept a little bit warmer. So I have got this teeny tiny little cardigan, which is super cute and doesn't go with any of the other outfits, but that's just how it is. And then I've got a hat. Um, and then these are vests and sleep suits in um, a bigger size. So in um, zero to three months, so they're a bit bigger, um, just in case the other ones don't fit. So like I said, I'm only planning to be there for one night, but I am taking about three or four vests in each size and three or four sleep suits in each size, because I don't know which size will fit, and also the baby might obviously mess up their clothes and need to be changed a few times. So it feels like a lot of clothes. If the newborn stuff doesn't fit at all, then it might not even be enough clothes if the baby um, is sick a lot or whatever. No idea. Um, I've also got some socks. All of the sleep suits have feet, apart from one. So the socks are probably pointless, but um, they're so tiny. Um, I can just put them in. And then I've got some mittens um, here as well. Um, these are quite cute. Have little dinosaurs on them. Um, so I'm taking those. And I'm also taking some muslin. So this is one that could actually be big enough for a swaddle. Um, and then these two are smaller and would be more just for like a cover up or to wipe the baby up or I don't know. I don't know what you use muslins for, whatever it is. Um, and then I've got one toy, which is this elephant rattle which the baby will probably not be interested in at all, um, but it might look cute in a picture. So I'm taking that just so we can entertain ourselves with the rattle. Um, I just felt like I should take a toy with me. Um, and then the last things are these reusable wipes for the baby. So um, I've got more than this at home, but these are just the ones that I'm taking with me. Uh, I know they recommend, I think, cotton wool and water. Um, but these are basically the same, but they're reusable and then you just use water. So this is like the fresh ones, these are the clean ones, um, and then this is for the dirty ones. Um, and then you can just unzip this and throw this straight in the washing machine. So hopefully that will work out for us. Um, I know people go on about water wipes, but A, they just seem very expensive, and B, people go on about them as being amazing because they're just water. This basically water and tissue and then but you're paying like however much you're paying for water and a tissue when you could just use water and some cotton wool or water and some reusable wipes and although the wipes were obviously a more expensive up front I paid about 45 pounds for 50 wipes the two um, on the go bags and then two like plastic tubs for at home and then some essential oils as well. Um, and I think it's more cost effective in the long run definitely. It just makes more sense to me than just using something that's disposable and throwing it away. But it's just really the fact that people get very excited by the water wipes or the natural wipes that are um, just water but you're paying 
like loads of money for what is essentially a wet tissue. Anyway, that's my thoughts on water wipes. Um, that is the bag. So there's a couple more things. Like I said, I might take a book and I might take a disposable camera because I do really like using disposable cameras and doing like film photography and stuff. And then I think the only other things are my slippers, which I'm wearing. So I can't pack those yet. And then also like my phone, charger, um, and then that keys, purse, that kind of stuff um, that I'll be using up until we go. But basically, um, the bag is done and we could go right now, except let's not. Um, but that's it. So um, let me know what you think of what I've packed. And if you think that I've missed anything, you can leave a comment. I may or may not um, follow your advice. Um, if you've liked the video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe.